Welcome to Biofarm International's podcast, Outsourcing Cell-Based Potency Assays, brought to you by Eurofins Lancaster Laboratories, a global leader in laboratory services, supporting the needs of more than 800 biopharmaceutical companies through a full scope of laboratory expertise, ranging from method development and characterization services through marketed stability release. And now, here's your host for this podcast, Angie Draculich. Hello, this is Angie Draculich, Editorial Director of Biofarm International Magazine, and I'm here today with the Manager of Molecular and Cell Biology Services at Eurofins Lancaster Laboratories, Dr. Wei Hong Wang. Today, we're talking about outsourcing cell-based potency assays. Thank you for joining me this morning, Dr. Wang. A pleasure. So, to get started, can you tell us what are cell-based potency assays exactly, and why are they so crucial to biopharmaceutical production? Okay. Cell-based potency assays are functional assays that measure the physiological response of an indicator cell line when exposed to a given pharmaceutical product. It is a way to determine the product's potency when compared to a well-characterized reference standard. As we all know, release of biopharmaceutical products is dependent on proper characterization of the product, from its physiochemical properties to its biological activity and beyond. Cell-based assays are the preferred methods utilized for determination of a product's biological activity as part of lot release and stability testing program. This is because cell-based assays often offer the benefit of being scientifically relevant, but at the same time being relatively less time-consuming, especially when compared to in vivo methods. So what makes this a complex assay to perform? Well, cell-based potency assays can be quite challenging because we're dealing with live cells here. Each cell line has its own characteristics, and they're oftentimes very sensitive to small changes in the testing environment. The outcome of a cell-based assay can be impacted by many variables, from the age of the cells, the components within the growth media, the growth phase the cells are in, to slightly different settings of instrumentation, to small bias in analyst technique. Therefore, developing a robust method up front, combined with having well-trained analysts and keeping procedures as consistent as possible, are all critical to ensure long-term success in cell-based potency assays. And what are the most important considerations that go into developing a cell-based potency assay? I would say, first and foremost, select the right indicator cell line. The selection of the cell line, as well as the assay format, should be based on no mechanism of action of the drug. In addition, the selected cell line should be in general robust in growth and the response to the product. Once the cell line and assay format are selected, a dose response curve needs to be optimized so that there are sufficient number of dilutions throughout the range of the curve, and in particular on linear portion of the curve. This is to ensure assay accuracy and precision. Selection of appropriate data analysis tool is another important element to consider. Thank you. So let's talk about regulations for a little bit. Um, what are the current regulatory expectations for these types of assays? Well, again, the most important thing is the cell-based assay should speak to the mechanism of action of a product based on existing scientific knowledge. Sometimes that does mean multiple cell-based assay may be necessary, especially prior to product approval, to demonstrate thorough understanding of the product characteristics. In general, a cell-based potency assay needs to be well-qualified, if not fully validated by phase three of a clinical program. The variance of the specifications should be defined and justified. I also want to add that um, in recent years, more focus has been placed on proper statistical analyses of potency assays, and the concept of parallelism has been widely adopted by the industry when performing that analysis. Thank you. And to move on to outsourcing, what challenges are associated with outsourcing cell-based potency assays? And also, what might be some points to consider when working with a contract testing laboratory on this type of work? Well, due to its intrinsic variability, outsourcing cell-based um, potency assays can be very challenging. Cell-based assays are very technique-driven, and sometimes subtle differences in how cells are manipulated have a big impact on the outcome. So it is really, really encouraged that proper training be conducted by subject matter experts early on whenever possible. Also keep in mind that methods intended for QC testing have significantly more requirement than those used in R&D settings. 
and therefore that means further optimization may be necessary for an existing method. From a project management perspective, one recommendation we have for sponsors would be to plan ahead and allow sufficient time. This is because that in addition to establishing the assay itself, there are a lot of ancillary activities such as cell bank pre preparation and characterization, proper training of historical data that need to happen before a fully qualified method can be in place to support routine testing. Thank you for that explanation. And how can listeners learn more about outsourcing cell-based potency assays? If uh, listeners are interested in further discussion, Lancaster Labs will be hosting a webinar on November 15th where we will discuss industry trends, regulatory expectations, and strategies for outsourcing cell-based potency assays. We will offer perspectives from both a sponsor as well as a contract testing laboratory. If you want to register, please visit LancasterLabsFarm.com. Thank you so much, Dr. Wong, for that overview on outsourcing cell-based potency assays, and thank you for joining me today. Thank you very much. You've been listening to BioPharm International's podcast, Outsourcing Cell-Based Potency Assays, brought to you by Eurofins Lancaster Laboratories. To find out more, please visit them on the web at LancasterLabsFarm.com. Thank you.